Welcome back everybody. The time has finally come. Today's goal is to try to get 5J1113 out for its first actual test run. That's right, we are going to see if we can get it fired back up and start putting it through its paces. Um, here's the deal. So the hood is still off. That's sitting over there. But before we really actually drive this, the hood is going to have to be back in place because that provides your your top link basically between the radiator support and the top of the dash and the reason why we want to have that support in place is because the throttle lever for the diesel engine is pulling against governor spring tension on this dash and without the hood in place well the dash is pulling directly on the base of the starting engine carburetor so if we drive this too much without a hood on there we risk possibly breaking that carburetor off at the base so because I've had to open the diesel fuel system since our last test run out on the apron in front of the shop last spring. Well, I not only had to take the temporary fuel tank off and then plumb the new fuel line to the main tank, but I also took the test pressure gauge off and actually put the actual self and fuel pressure gauge on and that opened up our main fuel galley right there that feeds all the injector pumps. So there's some air back into the system. We're gonna to have to do a bit of a diesel fuel system bleed, I'm assuming, before this is gonna fire off. And we're gonna to have to have the hood off to access all the different points to get the air out of the diesel fuel system. I will probably give this a quick test in here to see if the diesel wants to light off relatively quickly. If not, um, I think what I'm gonna do is just throw it in gear, let the starting engine basically propel it out the door. We'll probably coast down the slight um, slope down there until we get down to the flat and we'll do all the diesel fuel system bleeding and everything right there. Let it smoke, let it pop, let it make the mess completely outside. So that's pretty much the goal. And today, well, I'll show you what the diesel engine break-in procedure is in the Caterpillar manual. We have it outlined right here. And I'm gonna say we've already got step one completed. Uh, that was period one, one half hour, operate the engine at low idle speed. That was basically what we did when we did the first test fire when it was still on the engine stand. So I'm gonna consider that first half hour interval is done. So the second one, number two, is another half hour. Operate the tractor in fourth gear without load at three quarter rated speed. That is our goal for today, and that's also what I wanted to have the narrower 12-inch wide track pads on to do because once we throw those big monster 20-inch wide ones on there, you're basically, well, it's in your best interest to start limiting your speed because you have a lot of mass just flinging around and around. So we want to get it out, get it in fourth gear, test the clutches, test the brakes, perform any clutch and brakes, clutch and brake adjustments that may be necessary and just overall see how everything works. So I'll get the door opened up here. We'll see if we can light that starting engine off and you all know the plan. Let's go. Compression release to start. Mag switch on, choke set, throttle set. Neutral, diesel throttle off. Gas on to the starting engine. Making good sure we're in neutral because I don't need to uh, run anything over in here. Just having one last look at everything. It should be a go. So, very important right here to try not to punch the toolbox when you pull on the rope.
pop from time to time. I think we're still working a little bit of air out. I didn't bleed that as much as I probably should have. Break, run the camera with one hand. There we are. shaking the ground too bad camera couldn't couldn't cope with it that is one tight d2 i mean the controls are just crisp it's responsive the clutch main clutch snaps the steering levers are just immediate response brake pedals nice and crisp you can really tell when you go through and put them back to 100 percent completely different feel about the whole tractor up there. Just enough time to make it. We got rain streaking down for no clouds right now. That's all right. It's not gonna stop us from having fun today, right?
All right, post test drive analysis. Well, as with everything, there were things I was happy with and there were some aspects I was less than happy with. Um, well, good news, bad news kind of thing. So we'll cover the bad news first. I didn't like the intermittent pop that this exhibited this time. I was thinking at first that it was just maybe some residual air in the system because I only pretty much cracked that upper bleeder at the top of the filter housing. Some really foamy looking diesel fuel came out. I left it open until it came out rather clear and then closed it. Shortly after that, well, I opened up all four lines on the fuel injectors and it hit enough that it took off. I could have also bled the bleeders on each individual um, fuel pump unit. I didn't do that. So I was hoping at first that pop was just maybe some residual air that was still in the system. It never fully went away. And even at some lower RPM, it was even a bit more prevalent. That being said, under load, it ran a lot better, but um, we've got some addressing to do with that because I noticed we've got some wet stacking starting. That's that black slimy stuff that comes out of the pipe. Incomplete combustion, unburned fuel. You can see it's even, we're starting to run down the block a little bit. Now that is um, also a side effect of rings that are not yet seated and an engine that is either running too cool or has just not been worked hard enough and we really haven't put a load on this yet that fourth gear operation was not much so i'm not against pulling all four fuel injectors again we could have one that has decided to hang open and possibly drip a little bit so we're not getting a good fine enough spray out of that for complete combustion it's hard to say i'm tempted just to throw a load on that drawbar and just see how the thing acts if it wants to clean up at all um Temperature wise, yeah, I've still got the temporary gauge in here. We've got some forward movement going on getting a uh, old weathered coolant temp gauge face. It ran 170, 175 ish, and that's still a bit cool. I like 190 anyhow on these old cat diesels, but we weren't really working it, putting a load on it either. So it may climb a little bit higher yet. We can actually work it a little bit, but I would like it like that to be a little bit warmer too. And I'm not against even throwing maybe a little bit hotter thermostat in this to see what uh, that improves. That was pretty much the only bad part. The good part is the controls on this tractor are crisp. I mean, it is like you're driving a brand new D2 just by the feel of it. When you pull on a lever or push on a pedal, something happens, okay? There is no leg, there's no slack. You can tell there's no like play in anything on this. It is tight, it is right. You can just get that feel when you're in the seat. Main clutch does need to be tightened up. Of course, that's a brand new disc in there and they usually wear the high spots off really fast. We've already lost a little bit of the snap on this one. So I'm thinking I'm gonna break back in and probably turn that one notch tighter. Steering levers are awesome, shifters awesome, brakes are awesome. And starting engine, one pull start yet. And one thing I noticed too, you know, we ran this uh, the very first time the oil got so dark in this and we did that episode showing how much metal was in it. It's still really nice and clean oil. So I think we've already got most of the, uh, the break-in metallic grit pretty much glazed off of those, uh, those new sleeves on the cylinders. And our fuel pressure did look really good on the gauge and we we're hitting just about right on our time intervals. Let's see if we can get a view of that, get the glare off. We're just transitioning from the zero halfway to the one right now. So I would say the, uh, the service meter is keeping pretty accurate time. No coolant leaks, coolant level still looks good. Engine oil looks good in the diesel yet, and we kept the tracks on it. So yes, aside from that, that occasional pop, I need to figure out what's causing that. I'm suspecting I'm gonna be getting back into the injectors on it, but I think we're gonna take it out for another good beat. I stopped just as the rain started out here, so this is really all we have time for today anyhow, and that's all right, because uh, plow day's day after tomorrow, so. I need to get going on uh, getting tractors in the last of the bits up there and ready for that. So this was the first run of 5J1113. Took us a long time getting to this point. Yeah, but we we're doing a pretty comprehensive rebuild series in the process. So hope it was entertaining for you all. I've got more work to do to it still. We'll get all the bugs worked out yet. So thanks for watching, everybody. Hope to see you back again.